Welcome to our latest video. In this video we're going to discuss how to remove Ubuntu from a Ubuntu Windows 7 dual boot machine. In this example we're going to be using a Windows 7 Ubuntu 13.04 VirtualBox machine. Uh, as you can see we're setting up the login screen for Ubuntu 13.04. This is more or less just to prove that it does in fact work as a dual boot. Please keep in mind that if you're looking for a way to remove Ubuntu and you have used Wubi to install the dual boot, this will not work. You'll have to sign back into Windows and uninstall Ubuntu using the Wubi uninstaller in the control panel. However, if you've used the live CD to actually set up the dual boot partitions, then you should have no problem going through these steps and removing Ubuntu. This should work on previous versions of Ubuntu as well, as long as they were not installed using Wubi. So we're just going to go ahead and sign out of Ubuntu and just reboot the machine. I'm sorry for the speed of this machine, it's a somewhat of a low-spec virtual machine. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and we'll reboot it, and once it comes back up, we'll be greeted with the Grub boot menu. Alright, here's the Grub boot menu. Let's just use the arrow key and go down to Windows and hit Enter. This will boot into Windows 7. Now you may be asking yourself, why remove Ubuntu? Why get rid of Linux? could be numerous reasons. Uh, some of the simple ones could be the fact that maybe you're just running out of hard drive space. You need to reconsolidate your space back to Windows. Uh, maybe for work or school or whatever. Um, one of the other reasons could be maybe you're just not happy using the Ubuntu system anymore. If that's the case, then it's fairly simple to take care of. Let's go to Start and Computer. We're going to verify we only see one drive. We do. On my Windows 8 machine, I actually see a extra partition that I can't open, and that is my Ubuntu partition. So first step first, we need to remove the Grub bootloader. To do so, we're going to use a tool called EasyBCD. The link for EasyBCD will be in the video description below. When you first arrive on the EasyBCD website, you're going to notice there's a big Buy Now button. If you're using this utility within a commercial environment, you need to pay for it. If you scroll down, you'll notice that EasyBCD can set up a boot environment with pretty much any operating system. It's a pretty versatile tool. Um, I've used it with Linux and Windows. I can't vouch for the other OS's, but it works pretty well with Windows and Linux. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see the commercial version is right around $30. It comes with some different perks and supports. Uh, it comes with some extra features and things as they get released. We're going to use the non-commercial or the free or the community edition. Um, if you click on the register button under the community edition, it'll take us to the download page. Now the catch with the community edition is basically your only line of support is going to be forums and, and other help websites. So then you're going to click on download. If you want to get email from them on updates, you can put your name and your email address in there. Likewise, if you like the software, but you maybe didn't want to spring for the $30 to purchase the license for it, you can also make a donation as well for those who are interested. So once it downloads, click the installer. We'll go and get rid of the browser here. Click on Next, and you're just pretty much going to take the defaults all the way through the installation wizard. That'll take just a minute to install. Click on Next. Once that's done, it's going to prompt you for your language. And it's going to give you the disclaimer about the community edition being the free version. If you need support, you can get it from the support forums. If you use this in a, com in a commercial environment to pay for the software. Then when you're done reading this, you can click on OK. This will open up Easy BCD. While we're inside EasyBCD, feel free to take a look around the software and uh, see some of the other settings and options you can do. You can edit boot menus, you can add entries to boot menus. Some pretty cool stuff that you can do with an EasyBCD. In our case, we just want to repair the boot files. So we're going to select the second option down, click on Perform Action. Now, just below that was an option to back up your settings. Uh, you could have made a backup if you'd like. In our situation, with this being a virtual machine, we just want to restore the, the master boot record. So once the action has completed, uh, we can come over here to File and go to Exit. Then we want to come down to Start and reboot the machine. I do highly recommend that you do a reboot after removing the Grub bootloader. Uh, this is so we can test to make sure that Grub was successfully removed. In the event in which Grub was not removed, then you'll have to go down another avenue to resolve the issue. However, in our situation here, we can see that Grub didn't pop up during the reboot, so we're good. The next step is to remove the Ubuntu partitions from the computer. Pull this off, go to Start, right-click on Computer, and go to Manage. 
This will open the computer management console. We're going to use the disk management tool uh, to delete these partitions. Now, when we go into disk management, you're going to see four partitions. Two are the NTFS file systems. That's our Windows partitions. You don't want to touch those. The other two have the unassigned file systems. Those are the, the swap and the Ubuntu. We can delete those. Make sure you have the proper sizes for your partitions before you delete them. You don't want to delete the wrong one. Right click on the Ubuntu partition. That's the larger unassigned partition. And left click on delete volume. The prompt is going to come up and say that anything contained within that volume is going to be destroyed when you delete that volume. So we just want to go ahead and get rid of it. So say yes. That will mark that volume as unallocated space. The next one over is the swap. We need to do the same thing. Now notice that the swap turned into free space. If that happens, right click and go to delete partition. Say yes. Now it's merged both those partitions into one lump of unallocated space. So now we need to extend the Windows partition to take up that unallocated space and reclaim it. So right click on the Windows partition and go to extend volume. Go next. By default, the extend volume wizard will give you the total amount of unallocated space that you can extend to. So say next and you can verify the, the right settings here. Click finish. And notice that the, the graph has changed. Now the entire Windows volume takes up just right under 20 gigabytes of space, which means we're good to go. One thing I usually like to do is to verify that those settings did in fact take effect. We see they did, but you can never be too too cautious. So to start and go back to computer this time, and you can see here that it did in fact apply the changes. Let's go to right click and properties. Sure enough, there's our disk usage, and we can see what's uh, what's going on here. Fantastic. Let's click on OK and close. One more thing I usually like to do, and that is to reboot, just to make sure we're not going to have any problems when the machine comes back up. Now I skipped a big part of the reboot process. No reason to set through it again. We can launch the Windows Explorer, go back into computer, and check it out and make sure that our settings are still the same, and they are. And there you go. Ubuntu has been removed. You're now back to a single boot machine running Windows 7. As always, feel free to visit our website at techiesmarts.com. Check up on our latest ramblings, geek news, app of the week, uh, Linux, Windows news, reviews, app reviews, help, articles, any of that good stuff is all listed there. Also, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with our videos as we release them. Uh, stay up to date with us uh, by clicking the big subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Also, if you can find us on Twitter, Google+, and on Facebook. The links to those sites will be in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching, and have a fantastic day. Thank you.